Good Woden's Day. Right, let's start in the United States of America with these Doug Chort charts that have been put together here. Industrial production in the United States. Real income, top right. Non-farm employment, bottom left. Retail sales, those are real retail sales. That when it says real, it's adapted for inflation. Inflation's been taken out. So it's real. Yeah, industrial production's not where it was, but it's really getting back there. You could almost call it a V-shaped recovery. Real income is not really a V-shaped recovery, but it's it's getting back up there. Non-farm employment is struggling. It's still struggling. Retail sales, a bit like industrial production, not quite V-shaped, but really getting back up there. What these charts show are that... Given half a chance, and half a chance would be the rest of the world not going into recession, the United States would get back into the groove. They'd probably even get growth above blah. Yeah, but there is the problem that there is looking like there's going to be a turn down in the rest of the world. And this is all predicated on trillion dollar deficits as well. For the last four years and projected as far as the eye can see, the United States is running trillion dollar deficits and they're needed to get these numbers all heading upwards. But it's going to be interesting to see if a world recession or how much a world recession can pull these numbers down again. Okay, moving on. Oh yeah, Poway. Poway out on the left coast. School district. You probably all heard about this in the news. Borrowed a lot of money, well, borrowed 31 million up front and then 179 million that's going to be dribbled in over a, a few years, given to them over a few year period. And to make sure that the, the taxes didn't have to go up, they said to their lenders, well, we won't actually start letting borrow, <laughs> we won't actually start paying you back. Um, for 20 years, I think, or something like that. So the payments only start in 20 years' time, and they go out and payments will go on for another 20 years after that or something. But that sort of a con costs money. On the left is the 31 million that they borrowed up front in cash, kind of, do you want cash with that, cash back? And for the school district, the 179 million that's going to be given to them so they can complete their schools projects over the next few years but the repayment schedules come with the equivalent or if some you could call it the 31 billion eventually will have will cost them 219 million and the 179 million will cost them 1 billion in other words they're going to borrow 200 million and it's going to cost them 1.2 billion to pay back. That's six times as much, is it? Uh, 20 million, 1.2 billion, it must be six times as much. That is one hell of a big bet. What Poway is saying is that in 20 years' time, Poway will be so rich and prosperous that um, paying back the, uh, the 1.2 billion over the next 20 years after that will be a doddle. It's fair enough. It's maybe not even a bad bet, but it's a hell of a bet to take with the future of uh, the next generation of Powayists, is it not? Anyway, let's move on. Gallup poll, a Gallup poll. In general, do you think there is too much, too little, or about the right amount of government regulation of business and industry. Now, I brought this up because how many people that you know, or can imagine, have an absolute sodding clue whether really, really and truly, there is too much, too little, or about the right amount of government regulation of business and industry? Do you know anybody that knows that? Uh, could really have a, a say something sensible about that. Um, very, very few people could, I think. You can. Everyone's allowed their opinion, but what sort of a valid valid opinion is it? Okay, 
what the, this points out too much which is the dark green and obviously pro rata the too little and right amount go down as too much goes up and it starts going up in 2008 and a half now what i think this is it's the power of the media meme this is could be the start of what um, fox news and the tea party type people people getting on the television and going blah 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 and then other people in Gallup polls just repeat it afterwards. Do we really believe that the general population that Gallup have asked on this have really had their opinion um, of what government regulation of business and industry is like? No, it's just their input has changed and that has then changed their opinion. No? Yes? Moving on. But you can see the great big rise from 34 up to a maximum of 50% of people saying now that there's too much government regulation of business and industry. Let's face it, they haven't got a stuffing clue, have they? But because that's what they've been primed to say by prime time television, that is what they do say. Right. I went to the BLS figures, I forget why. <laughs> and since 1987 they've been running a series called Wives Who Earn More Than Their Husbands. And the series goes up to 2009. I've chopped it in the middle and put the two pieces together to give this presentation. Okay. They've got two sections of it. Family on the left is families in which wives have earnings but husbands may not. In other words, the, the wives earning but the husband might not be earning at all. On the right-hand section, we've got families in which both wives and husbands are both earning, but um, for this information, the wives are earning more than the husbands. In 1987, for some reason, they started it and found that far right, 17.8% of wives, when both are earning, um, could be earning more than the husband and that is now up to 28% 29% 28.9% of wives who earn more than the husband when the husband is working now presumably all things being equal there will be a day that'll be 50 50 won't it I can't think I can't think I, probably okay and on the other families which wives have earnings but the husbands have not for whatever reason, just a house husband or other reasons, I don't know what it might be. It started at 23.7% in 1987, but the latest from the BLS is 38% um, of wives earned more than their husbands. But if the husbands aren't earning, um, I'm not sure what that figure means. Maybe I should look into it more. But that's quite interesting, isn't it? That the wives are now definitely getting the earning power. Why? Because they are bothering to educate themselves more than the men and are getting the financial advantage of that accruing now. Yeah? Yeah. Right. Let's go to the Financial Times Alphaville and Q Eternity and the F Dick Guarantee Liquidity and a Pumpkin. <laughs> Basically what we've got in the old days of the crisis. Um the government of the United States of America guaranteed the FDIC deposit for all, um, what do they call it, for deposit insurance for non-interest bearing transaction accounts. Um, all deposits basically were, were, were um, to any amount, were guaranteed by the government to, to get through the crisis and stop bank runs. It comes to an end at the end of December. Um, 1st of January, whatever it would be. Yeah. Now, that's quite important because at the moment, as I've said yesterday, the amount of safe assets that are available in the world, but we're talking the United States here, are very small. So we're talking treasury bills here. Would you want to put your money in a bank account? And it's perfectly safe because it's government guaranteed. Even if it's $20 million, it's government guaranteed. You might get, how much would you get on $20 million? Still, not much interest. Or you could buy a treasury bill and get that much interest. But they're both safe. The thing is, 
January the 1st, the one, the other side, the bank accounts will not now actually be, you know, as safe as a treasury bill because they will now not be guaranteed by the government. They'll go back to the old maximum, was it 250,000 or something? Or whatever it was, I don't know. But there will be millions, billions, and there's a possibility heading up towards a trillion dollars that could be stuffed into bank accounts just for safekeeping at the moment. And on January 1st, that will not be safekeeping anymore. And that money, because it's now not safe, could well go to places like Treasury bills, again, driving up the price of Treasury bills. And the, the idea of this article is it's another thing that will be trying to drive interest rates negative. And this is why the um, Fed must keep a small interest on reserves yeah but there is on the January the 1st going to be an awful lot of cash that will be looking for a new place to live so let's finish with this inflation adjusted gold prices quite interesting so again real um, gold prices inflation adjusted and at the bottom we've got it in dollars in red there at the bottom now we've got the spike on the left which was the um, 1980 spike and the, the real price is nearly that much in dollars at the moment but the the real low is probably the year 2000 something like that where in the United States in dollars the price of gold was about 400 and now it's 1800 so four fours are 16, five fours are 20. So it's gone up four and a half times in American dollar wise. More interesting perhaps. At the top, uh, the Chinese renminbi, because it's a more recent currency, let's say, in white and on the left hand scale, uh, in 2000 it was 3000 or 4000 um, yuan, renminbi. And now it's gone up to 12. So it's up four times since the low in 2000. In the Indian rupee, it's a similar shape to the dollar one, but it's going up slightly more at the end. And that low was 3,000 rupee, and now it's 9,000 rupee. So it's still, it's only gone up three times since the low of 2000. So three times in rupee what was it, three and a half uh, to four in renminbi and four and a half in dollar terms from the low to the high in gold. 400% that is, up four and three, four or five times. Interesting, because I think there's a good chance that um, the gold price will go up on January the 1st in America when this goal, the, the, this money is looking for a new place to live. It's not safe gold, so it might not, because these people, there are an awful lot of people want an absolutely guaranteed safe place to put their money. But there will be more money that will be going into other assets rather than just straight bank accounts. Leave you with that. Thanks. Bye.